presentation, uh, which gave me my first opportunity to say squirt in a professional setting. So thank you for that. Uh, and Jamie Ziegelbaum is here to present. I have uh, I'm Jamie Ziegelbaum. Uh, and actually, it's, it's slur, but squirt is also good. No, I said it this morning. Five minutes. Oh, you said squirt. <laughs> oh, actually. Oh. <laughs> well. <laughs> so, uh, I'm a student uh, at the Tenor Media Group at the LIT Media Lab, and uh, these are my co-authors here. Uh, and uh, I just want to say before I begin that uh, taking part in the all process this year was really pretty awesome, and I, I recommend it, and I hope you continue doing that. So, uh, let's start by imagining the future. So this is a uh, kind of scary Cubist Stanley Kubrick future, so we'll change that and add some things. Here's some table books and stuff like that. But since it's the future, it's a little bit different. There's uh, all this digital information that's uh, attached to all of these objects. And in this work, we're looking at ways that we can interact with digital objects attached to physical objects and try and make the uh, transition between the physical and the digital world a little bit more seamless. Let's look at some standard methods that we might use to, to interact with this world. One would be a large cell phone, maybe an iPhone, something like that. And uh, you have this uh, GUI widget drop-down list. And if you have all these things in your in your room, and you know maybe as tagging uh, technologies get better, and as we've seen already, you can tag tons of stuff with RFID and you can add all types of information to it. You could have a very long list. You want, say you wanted to Google it instead. You say you want to find out, you know, one of those light bulbs, uh, how much energy it's drawn. Right. So you could maybe do a text search for light bulbs, and you have all these light bulbs come up. I don't know. That might be one way to do it. That's also <coughs> tricky. So let's look at other ways to do it. This is a hypothetical augmented reality system. So you take your phone and you point it around the room and you want to find information about that cup. So I point it over there and you know maybe there's some text overlay with it and then I can click on it and get some more info from it. And this is a pretty good technique. Uh, one of the, we, this work uh, goes in a different direction. The reason is, uh, well, there are a couple reasons. One is this technique takes advantage of using some of the RBI language, the reality-based interaction language from the presentation before the uh, project that we're going to you can think of it being taking advantage of the environmental awareness and skills of, of, of people. So we know that there's physical objects out here in the room that have information about them, around them. If I want to find out more about this cup, I can walk over to it, look at it, pick it up. Um, so this is taking advantage of that. But it's also mediating all through a small screen. And uh, screens are pretty dynamic. You can get a lot of dense information on them. They're also fairly private. And when you have a screen like this, and I'm doing this, you don't know if I'm taking your picture, if I'm reading an email, or if I'm looking at information about that over there. It could be any of those things. So what we wanted to do is add some more directness, some uh, use physical affordances, metaphor, in order to give something that's more readable to other people that are around. So you've got this digital information here. Wouldn't it be great if you could just grab it, you know? So if I went and grabbed that digital information, you could see what I'm doing, you could talk about it, who knows? It's a little bit more open. Uh, so you can't quite do that. Uh, so how do we go? Uh, one way to think about it is say, you know, there was a placard on the table that said information about the table, where it was made, uh, who owned it. You know, if I went over and walked over to that placard and looked at it, this would be very interpretable to other people. You might not know what I'm reading, but you know that I am examining this thing. It's just kind of part of our social experience as human beings. So uh, there's, there's two parts to this problem. Uh, there's this infrastructure part. As tagging technology gets better and better, uh, and other technologies are advancing, we're kind of taking that as a an assumption in this work that over the future years, this stuff is going to get better and more opportunities to tag. We're not looking at that side of it. We're using technologies in order to look into the interface side of things. And um, these technologies will probably going to be used again at a later date when we get into that. So a lot of other people have also looked at similar questions. So going through these quickly, uh, David Merrill and Patty Mays, the Invisible Media Project, they used a ring with a IR transceiver on it. I think it was a receiver on the, on the ring. You know, the IR beacons out in the world. You could point at like an engine, or you could point at uh, some food on a shelf, and you could hear in your ear information about that object. Uh, it's kind of a one-way uh, way to, to look and, and search out things in the world. And then there's a tool device, uh, which is uses these uh, kind of physical objects. Uh, there's a ladle and a syringe and uh, popsticks to grab information from one screen and move it to another, trying to use the physical affordances of those objects to structure that interaction. And there's media blocks, uh, which was an early example of, of binding a physical object to a digital object using a wooden block to transfer slides and other things like that. Uh, Junior Ekimoto's pick and drop, which is a very classic example of using a stylus to tap on a screen on a, on a, on a file and then move that to a different screen. Uh, uh, I.O. brush, which 
uses the affordances and the, the understand metaphor of a brush in order to grab uh, colors from the world and then paint it onto a digital palette. And finally, there, there's some work down here on uh, multi-display region techniques. Maybe that will make more sense when I show you what we did with Slurp. So uh, here's the basic idea of Slurp. Uh, and what we're doing is we're thinking, well, digital information is very <coughs> abstract digital information. It's fairly difficult to manipulate with your bare hands, right? You can't pick it up. But so what is something in the physical world that's kind of similar to that? Well, all right, so we said, well, water. Water's kind of difficult to manipulate precisely. You can't, you can't grab it. You need a, a type of intermediary tool in order to make precise manipulations on it. So we use this metaphor of an eyedropper, uh, something that you can, you can suck up a small amount of, of, of water information and squirt it out somewhere else. So here, information gets slurped up into the slurp. Uh, so I'll show you how it works. Uh, this might be a little confusing. Uh, Adam is, is moving this eyedropper around, and uh, there's a few objects that we've tagged in our lab space. And when he points it at this fire extinguisher, the stem of it lights up. He squeezes it like a like an eyedropper, and it kind of sucks the light into the bulb of this device. And then you can squirt it into a display device. And in this example, there's a fire extinguisher. We've already taken that video. It's not taking a video here. And uh, we've, we've added it to the, you know, there's an ID being transmitted over an IR beacon or IR node that's on the fire extinguisher. It's just reading that small number, then squirting it into a computer, and that's finding it on the database and, and loading it. Uh, so you see another example here. Uh, but it could be any information. It could be a website. Um, you know, you imagine uh, you know, every shirt in your closet has a web it's on the website on Sunday. And you can look and see the materials where that shirt came from. You can see where they wore it. You can see maybe even what conversations that you had in that shirt. And the manufacturer's information that's added to it as well. Um, so it doesn't have to be these little videos. So that's that. And there's also other way to use it. Uh, and maybe you can tell me how we cheated here. So I'm uh, using it on a screen. You can move it. If this were a touch screen, I'll tell you how to cheat. Not a touch screen. I'm using the mouse also. But if it were a touch screen, uh, you wouldn't need to use the mouse. So I, I grab a file from one screen and then you can squirt it on another screen. You're kind of bypassing the need to use a USB drive or you know some other graphical mediation. And the other good thing about it is you can use non-display, non-visual displays.